Hello and welcome to the last edition of Temple Timeout for the semester. I'm Bree Hofsas. And I'm Vince Kyle. Coming up today, we're talking some football, NFL draft, and Temple spring game tomorrow. Another game tomorrow, Temple Lacrosse. We're going to get you caught up with that. All right, and then we have a special look at the National Girls and Women in Sports Day. And we have a special surprise for you for this last episode. All that and more after this timeout. And Temple football is back. Mark your calendars, folks, because tomorrow is the cherry and white game. And Vince, you and Adam are going to be down there. And just like every year, you know, there's a lot of new guys. They're looking to really prove themselves, show what they've got. And then this is an especially special year because it's under head coach Jeff Collins, who, as we all know, replaced Matt Rule. So it's going to be really interesting to see uh, just how he differs from Matt Rule in such a... Uh, an easygoing game, you know what I mean? Yeah, so here's the things I'm going to be looking for tomorrow at this spring game, spring game because, first of all, you know I'm excited. Football season is back, and what we're looking at here is, we, we talked about it earlier, the quarterbacks is going to be a big thing to watch because, as of right now, Logan Marchie will be starting, but it is, it is just spring. The, the season is months away, so you can't really take too much you know, emphasis onto that. But Logan Marchie will get the start, most likely. And then you move to linebackers because the linebacker core, they lost three seniors who played a lot of football. I'm talking about Stefan Marshall, Jared Alwan, and Avery Williams. They all graduate last year, so they're going to be looking to some, young, to some young guys to be coming up, filling their shoes. And then you look at the coaching staff, and this is going to be cool to me because this is where you're going you're gonna to get a, a, a look at what Jeff Collins is, you know, his whole unit, because most of these coaches are new. You know, only a couple guys stayed from the Matt Rule era. You're going to, you know, see how they call plays in and how, you know, Matt Rules was running up and down the sideline all the time. You know, Jeff Collins might be cool, <laughs> might be, you know what I mean? So it's going to be, I'm excited to see how it's going to look, you know, for the season. All right, and that game is tomorrow at noon at Edberg Alston Hall. But there's still more football coverage, don't worry, because the NFL draft is next week. And yes. you and I are, are lucky enough that we're going to be able to cover it from the draft at the Ben Franklin Parkway. And I'm really excited, but I bet you there's a lot of owls that are really nervous and they're anxiously awaiting to see where and if they're going to land anywhere. For, absolutely. So I, w I was just saying, I was down at the parkway yesterday and – I don't know how in six days they're going to make this look presentable because it is like you wouldn't even be able to tell that it's a all they have all they have done is the stage and everything else is crazy so it, you know a lot of work to be done in six days but they're, they're most likely going to get it done but for Temple five guys you know in this conversation to get drafted and I know you're thinking odd man out here Philip Walker we haven't really talked about him but that's because his draft stock has been rising recently Mark Narducci just put up a, a post saying you know NFL teams are taking a liking to him and I think that's really cool. You look at Hassan Reddick, you know, going from left to right now. Hassan Reddick is, you know, a top 15 guy, most, almost certainly going in the first round. Some guys even have him in the top 10. Move on to Deion Dawkins, you know, another fringe first, maybe even second round guy, probably second round, but he could go as high as the first round. Jihad Thomas. You know, we're, we're going we're gonna to get into that. And then Nate Harrison, the cornerback, he's a real lock, probably fifth or sixth round to get drafted. So there's a lot of, you know, excitement going on, a lot of guys that potentially can get drafted. So we're going to be excited to find out what's up. Now let's talk a little bit more about Philip, uh, not Philip Walker, Jihad Thomas, yeah. excuse me, because he really seems to think that he's going to get drafted. And personally, <laughs> I, I don't see it. I can see him maybe signing with the team, but I just see three things to me that – they stick out so much that teams just aren't going to be able to look overlook. First off, he, his size. His size has been an issue for him. Uh, that's why Temple was one of the few schools that was looking for him in college. Right. Uh, he's just too small. But then he's <laughs> also injury prone, which 
to me as a coach, like I, I don't want someone that is small and is going to get hurt a lot. I don't care about his agility. He was injured the first two games of the season. Last and even season. even at the NFL Combine, he was uh, he was injured a little bit. Yep. And then uh, he is versatile. He this year we saw a lot of his versatility, and he is has some really good hands. He can catch some really good balls. But mm. I just think that there are better guys that can catch harder balls, yeah. honestly. And yeah, yeah. to me, I just I think that that's enough to for him not to be drafted. But my question to you, Vince. Who do you think is more likely to be drafted between the New Jersey duo of Jihad Thomas and Philip Walker? This is interesting because if you would have asked me this a month or two ago, I would have definitely said Jihad Thomas in a heartbeat. But after these articles are coming up, I really am thinking I'm going to edge this one to Philip Walker because Jihad Thomas, uh, you know, he's 190 pounds and, and, and a 40, you know, in the 4 6 range. That has NFL scouts going. You know, I, I can't even. I can't, I'm, I'm, as I'm a look, running back. As a running back. I'm going to look right past that and a return man, you know, at, at, out of the backfield. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I'm excited to see how it goes, but ultimately, I do think Philip Walker has, has the edge here. All right. Yeah. Well, that's enough about football for this episode <laughs> of Temple Timeout. <laughs> we're going to move right along to lacrosse because, you know, they just keep winning. They were just down in Nashville, Tennessee for a battle against Vanderbilt. And, you know, they came from behind and they were really able to, to come back. A huge part of that is because of the senior duo, Carly D'Amato and Brenda McDermott. You see that right there. Both of them had four goals apiece. And that was a huge reason why they were able to make that comeback and defeat the Commodores 11 to 10. Yeah, and this is just an update on the Owls because they play tomorrow versus Florida in their uh, senior day, and Florida is ranked second in the nation, and Florida is 7-0 and in the Big East. They're also Big East members. Uh, yeah, here we go. Temple is 6-1 and in the Big East, except here's the, here's, the, here's the caveat. Temple has not lost at home, and they're playing at home against a number two ranked team. That, that game's at 1 o'clock. You're not going to want to miss that. It's, it is Right, right along with the spring game, so you're gonna you, you have a tough decision tomorrow because the spring <laughs> game starts at 12. This starts at one o'clock. You're gonna want to get out there, hopefully catch both of them. I don't know. I would try to go to the lacrosse game because <laughs> it's not only senior day, but this is going to determine who is going to be the number one seed in the Big East tournament yeah. because then Temple would have the tiebreaker with uh, beating Florida in the tournament. Right. But let's move along to uh, the National Girls and Women in Sports Day. Vince, you got a chance to check out this event. Just talk a little bit about what that was like. Yeah, so I, I, I ran a package that went on uh, the show yesterday. And let me just say, it was really cool because I, this is the fifth year that they're doing it, but the first time I ever seen it. It's basically the student athletes set up um, different different areas where they hold their drills. Like for example, they, you, they're open the, the TU Pavilion and the Geesey Field, so it's indoor, like outdoor. Like the track team was outside, and you know the the football guys were inside on the turf. And basically, just the girls in the community, you know, grades eight and below, came up and you know enjoyed some music, and they were throwing the football around, doing some gymnastics. It was really cool. Something I thought is definitely you know a, a good thing for the for Temple to give back to the community. I thought it was super super cool. And you know, as being a, a woman in sports, I think that it's a really cool and a really positive thing that Temple does for the community to encourage these young girls that sports are fun and sports are for everyone so I, I thought that that was a really cool really cool event yeah and here we go speaking of women in sports we got to move it to, the, to our player of the week and we're gonna stay with the lacrosse team because honestly there wasn't that many games this week <laughs> <laughs> and, and either way the, lac the lacrosse team is really good we're gonna give this week's player of the week to Carly D'Amato she had four goals against Vanderbilt in a comeback win huge huge win for the Owls there because you know another Big East team you know that mm -hmm. they were really fighting with Carly D'Amato, four goals. She has 29 goals on the season. That's second behind Brendan McDermott, you know, another senior. They're, they're really going to miss those two seniors, you know, ne come next year, come after the, everything ends. and the, the, <laughs> After the, the, let this year ends, going to the next year, they're going to miss those two. All right. Well, it is our last show for this semester, and I'm a little sad about it because it's been fun. Yeah. But we have a bonus for you. Um, we're actually going to take it to uh, uh, the NBA. Yeah. But we, don't, we haven't done any NBA coverage, <laughs> but <laughs> we're going to throw it back to Donnie Coleman. I don't know if you guys remember him. Oh, yeah. Former sports desk anchor. Look at him busting a move at the Celtics game. in the. I think that was the first round of the playoffs. The song behind this is, that girl is poison. <laughs> he's really, he's, he's breaking it down. I don't know if you could just there hear it is. Vince's there, There's the money. <laughs> <laughs> this is my jam. I love this Former song. sports desk anchor. You got to show him some love. You, you, you <laughs> made it on Twitter, made it on the big screen. 
Shout out to you, man. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we have for this week's Temple Time Out. As always, be sure to follow us at TU underscore Sports Desk, and especially this week for all your draft coverage. And don't forget to check out our Sports Desk tab at templeupdate.com. For Vince Call, I'm Bree Hopsess.